did you get on this health kick? And, you know, where did that come from? And why are you so passionate uh, about that subject? Yeah, so that's another great question. Um, so I grew up an athlete my entire life. And as I mentioned earlier, I come from a broken home and really humble beginnings. So sports was something that I felt at home with between my teams and my coaches and living in a super small town in the middle of nowhere, New Hampshire. And so what'd you you play, by the way, sorry to interrupt you, but what'd you play? Yeah. So I ran track and field and I played field hockey. Okay. Yeah. So we got a runner. I couldn't, I was not, I don't want to say it wasn't talented. I do have talent. Um, but I, I wasn't um, coordinated. So I chose the sport, but I didn't have, I didn't have anything coming at me. I just had to see that line, just go cross it. <laughs> yeah. Run, run forest, run. Yeah. My coach would always say run fast, turn left. That's it. <laughs> I so, love it. I love it. Yeah. So I grew up an athlete and I think, um, I think just the emotional stability, the structure the systems, these are all important things that I was lacking in a family unit that I was finding in sports. And I saw how they affected my overall health and mood and well being. And I've always been complimented on my ability to overcome obstacles and just things that happened in life. And so I attribute that to my mental well being and my health. And that came from sports. So I really just was always attracted to that lifestyle. And now in my adult life and uh, going through my own healing journey, I've recognized and realized how much our emotional health is connected to our mental health, which is connected to our physical health. Um, no one is more important than the other. They're all equally important than, and we need to be taking care of ourselves and, and maintaining a balance between those. And so that's really where my brand kind of stemmed from and my attraction to health and wellness comes from. <laughs> All right. Well, you, we, we would be remiss if we didn't get some sort of healthy habit hack from you. So what's your healthy habit hack that you want to share with us today? Oh, goodness. Just one? <laughs> <laughs> or 12 or 12. It's yeah. up to you. <laughs> if you want 12, you can go to my Instagram. Mm -hmm. they're, they're slowly seeping out on there. But um, one healthy habit hack. Um, I would say, and this is one that I'm practicing, um, is don't reach for your phone first thing in the morning. Don't, um, I think, I think we need to get into the habit of creating before we're creating before we get to a point where we're like ingesting. And that's all we're really doing is ingesting everything that comes at us from the screens, from other people, from our dog that's jumping on us that needs something like everyone wants something from us. So instead of everyone else wanting something for you, give yourself a minute and, and understand what you want from yourself. And that could be as simple as in the mornings that I'm practicing, um, I have a whole morning routine. But before I go into that morning routine, I'm practicing asking myself, how do I feel today? Because I'm prompted in my morning routine, but I'm also given a list of emotions. And so oftentimes I'll just select one, but there's power in just like really feeling it for yourself. And it's two seconds, like, Hey, how do I feel today? Well, my lower back's pretty sore. I lifted heavy yesterday. Today I'm feeling a little tired. I didn't get as much sleep. But, you know, I'm excited. It's going to be a good day. So just really giving yourself two to three seconds to recognize how you feel and what you want from your day before diving into everyone else wanting something from you and diving into the phone, emails, the texts, Instagram, all of it. Just take four seconds to yourself in the morning. I love that. That's fantastic. <laughs> So well, well said. I appreciate you sharing that with us. And uh, and so so look, I, I I know you're in a business that allows you to build and to grow and to expand. And and I guess another word for that business would be multi-level marketing or something like that, or network marketing. A lot of different names you can call it. Um, why did you choose that model versus just going and getting a job somewhere? Well, um, for a couple of different reasons. So the first is because um, I sort of fell into um, the industry and the company that I'm with by way of a family member. 
and I don't believe in coincidences. Uh, I believe it is the very best company for me. And I wasn't, I was not sure about that when I got into it. I was questioning everything. However, um, I, I ended up losing my brother 10 days after registering. And so I didn't do anything with it for the first couple months. Um, obviously I was just focusing on healing. And then when I got, when I got bearings, um, I got my bearings. I, re I realized, you know, I, I would have rather honored my brother in the way that I could have afforded to and not. Uh, in the way that he should have been honored and not just the way I could have afforded to. Um, my family spread out all across the country and in that, you never want to have to look at a price tag. Um, it's, it was just not what I wanted to do. And um, I wanted to be able to take care of all of my family members and not have to, uh, I didn't want there to be any sacrifice given the circumstance that we were navigating through. And um, that stuck out to me as number one, especially because I'm 3000 miles away from every single family member. <laughs> so that's really hard. Um, so being able to afford the lifestyle that I want and not just the lifestyle that I want, but being prepared for impact because it does, impact does happen and we never know when it will happen. And that could be any sort of impact. Um, for example, mine was a loss of a loved one, but it could be a loss of a job. It could be a global pandemic. We saw a lot of that. <laughs> it could be any impact. And so that would be my second reason was preparation for just a plan B. And my third was I just understood how um, I, I understand compound and building leverage between time and financials. And this, to me, this structure was a no brainer to be able to do that. And did I grow up wanting to be in multi-level marketing? No, uh, but it's offering me the opportunity to be able to now start a nonprofit that's on my heart because of my life experiences. And so to be able to build something that puts me in a position where I can live out my passions and impact people in the exact way that I want, like, why would you not? <laughs> so, and, and it's perfect because again, you know, I sort of fell into this company, but I think that's the biggest thing. Like I'm an advocate for all for all multi-level marketing, but the biggest thing is finding the vehicle that that's perfect for you. Like if you're shopping in a car lot, you know, if you, if you want a, a Mercedes then then don't go looking at like Toyota or Hyundai because you know what you like and you, those are your values, stick to your values and find the vehicle that matches those values and then work that and use that um, and then build whatever you want from that. And so those are some of the reasons why I got into that industry and why I continue to work it um, because it's getting me to where I want to be really. Yeah. I mean, and, and I think it's, it is a perfect model, really. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, the only reason why you said in the beginning, you're like, well, I never thought I was going to be in multi-level marketing. The only reason why is because teachers generally don't do multi-level marketing. So, yeah. and, and, and so they never taught you to do multi-level marketing. They never, they, it, it's not like they taught you leverage in school. It's not like in school, they said, hey, let's talk today about leverage. Let's talk today about business. Let's talk today about building massive passive income. Did, it, did any teacher ever teach you that? No, of course not. So nope. people like you or me that got involved in the leverage business, we could call it. People like us, we, you know, we kind of fell into it because it was just a random person that said, hey, come check out this presentation. And then so we went and saw it and we went, holy shit, this is unbelievable, man. How come nobody ever taught us this shit before? Right. So <laughs> that is that's what's what's beautiful about it. I mean, thank you for watching our short clips on Alonzo Academy. If you'd like to watch the next short clip, click here. If you'd like to watch the entire podcast, click here.